testing. And hallelujah. Glory. We're waiting for the, you know, kind of like the guy who used to run the old TV shows. <laughs> so I'm waiting for the floor director. Okay. Hallelujah. Well, welcome. It's uh, Wednesday night here at Faith and Victory Church's Expedition Church. <laughs> it is so hard. You know, so many years. And, and remember, the church that we came out of, when we came out of it, was Faith and Victory Church in Greenville. That was the Faith and Victory Church. So, I mean, for, for since 1981... <laughs> We've gone to Faith and Victory Church. <laughs> so that's only 41 years. So, uh, might take me a little while to get used to calling this Expedition Church. Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. All right. So welcome to Expedition Church Wednesday night service. We're continuing our series, as you can see, The Bible in the Light of Our Redemption by E.W. Kenyon. This is the newer um, version of the uh, book in its print format. I think same material. Um, the other one was a smaller book printed by Kit Gospel, Kenyon Gospel Publishing that all the pages always fell out. The, the glue they used was terrible and all your pages would just fall out all the time. So these are, these are, these are bound better uh, by a different company, which is good. Hallelujah. Praise God. Father, we thank you for our time together in the word. We thank you that Jesus is Lord. Hallelujah. And we thank you that as we break the bread of life, Wisdom and revelation come unto us. Our eyes are open and the, the, the eyes of our understanding are enlightened. And we know what is the hope of your calling. Hallelujah. Through Jesus our Lord. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Last week we began ministering on our identification with Christ. And we talked about those steps uh, that took place in that. Hallelujah. Um, of, of how we became seated with Christ. And um, glory to God. So, you know, uh, we were crucified with Christ. We died with Christ. We were buried with Christ. We were made alive with Christ. Um, we were raised with Christ. And we are seated with Christ. Amen? Hallelujah. And so, um, you know, let's, let's talk about this, how that we, you know, we studied those steps. After he was made alive from spiritual death, he arose as the firstborn of many brethren. Glory to God. Remember 829, for whom he foreknew, he did foreordain to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Now, real quick, we're just going to jump off and, and, and dive right on in onto um, um, predestination. Predestination, it's, it's real simple. It's based on foreknowledge. Um, the predestination in Christ is that he foreknew us, therefore he predestined us. It is not, uh, as some would teach, predestination is um, God determined ahead of time you were going to get saved and you weren't and you were going to die on this day and you're not. Um, that, that is not biblical predestination. Uh, we are elect according to the knowledge of God. It is foreknowledge. He knew us. He knew who would receive Christ. And because he, he knew if you would or wouldn't, those who he knew would receive Christ, uh, he, what? They became elect. Okay? So you take foreknowledge out of the equation, and, a lot, and most of the teaching on predestination is off. You put foreknowledge in ahead of everything, and it changes the whole perspective. Okay? Whom he foreknew, he did predestine to become the sons of God. Can you say amen? Hallelujah. And then the firstborn among many, many brethren. He was the firstborn among many sons of God. The firstborn from the dead, according to Hebrews chapter 1, uh, 5 and 6. Uh, he's called the firstborn from the dead. Um, he's the first man in all the ages of human history to be born from spiritual death into the realm of life, which had to be done. It's the only way redemption could take place for humanity. This, this was the only path for all of humanity to be brought out of Satan's kingdom. Hallelujah. 
Colossians 1.18, he is the, he is the uh, head of the body, the church, who is. And he's the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he might have the preeminence. He is the head of the new creation. Hallelujah. That head of, of a new species, the head of the new man, uh, the head of, all, of, of a creation of men who are free from the dominion of Satan. Man fell into bondage and the authority and dominion of Satan when in the fall at the Garden of Eden, and all man was sold unto slavery unto that captivity and bondage. Hallelujah. And when Jesus came and, re, and, and became identified with us and took our place, hallelujah, in his death, burial, resurrection, ascension, and seating, and then through our acceptance of his redemptive work, we became identified with him, and all those things was the first time man was liberated from Satan's dominion since the fall. And now it's available to all who will but believe. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So when a man accepts the Son of God as Savior and Lord, uh, he passes out of death into life. Um, Colossians, I mean, 2 Corinthians 5, 17, wherefore when any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. We talked about that Sunday. Man, if we just all could see who we are. If you ever saw who you are, you'd never have another defeated day. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And the thing is, you know, I have not seen, ear have not heard, neither has entered into the heart of man the things that God has prepared for them that love him. You know what comes after that? But, thank you, Jerry, we have the mind of Christ. Hallelujah. There's a but there. And you know, sometimes you just need to find out what the buts are there for. Amen. No. Not in the natural realm. Man couldn't see it. But supernaturally, by the Holy Ghost, we had the mind of Christ. And, and, and the, 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 spirit of the, the, uh, the mind of Christ. And the Spirit of God searches the things of God. Yea, the deep things of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. See, people will quote scriptures and then leave out the rest. All have sinned to come short of the glory of God. There is none righteous, no, not one. Don't quit there. You got to read the rest of it. Amen. But the gift of God, hallelujah, is eternal life through Jesus Christ. So if you stop, we always want to stop. That's because a lot of times it messes with our narrative. Well, if I read the rest of it, that messes up what I was going to preach. Well, you got to read the rest of it. Whether, you know, because if you can't preach with it, the rest of it, you don't need to preach what you're preaching without the rest of it. Amen. This new creature in Christ is just as much a reality as the creation of Adam. Hallelujah. So in comparison to the two, creation and Adam. Think, remember this. Adam was created in the Garden of Eden. Um, the, he was the crowning glory of God's creation. All this creation was created for Adam. So Adam would have the dominion and be like God. See, God was going to reign over the universe. Adam was going to reign over this planet. And he was going to commune with the Father. And the Father would come down and commune with him. Now, Kenyon also has written a book uh, years ago uh, entitled The Father and His Family. See, we often think of Christianity and being saved as, you know, uh, the angry God isn't sending me to hell. But it's more than that. Jesus came and revealed him not just as Elohim, as El Shaddai, as um, Jehovah, he kept using this phrase, my father, my father, but the father, but the father. He kept calling God the father. And we only see one slight reference to that in Isaiah. And his name should be called, you know, uh, wonderful counsel, the mighty God, the everlasting father. But, you know, it's, it, there's not a father concept of God under the old covenant. Whereby he sent forth the spirit into our hearts. Whereby we cry Abba father. Abba probably being an Aramaic term. Meaning daddy. Okay. A, a, a term. A, a term. An engendering term of. Uh, relationship and closeness. Not just God. Here we are. The big God. The little peons. It's a family. We're united. 
and reconciled. Remember what, what's our ministry? 2 Corinthians chapter 5. We look down verses 17 through 21. Wherefore he's given unto us what? The ministry of reconciliation. What do we preach? Be ye reconciled to God. Not just delivered from the wrath of God. That's part of it. We, we do get delivered from the wrath of God. But not only that, we are reconciled to God. Jesus prayed that he, that, that, that he and the Father would be in us as the Father is in him. He's talking about a whole different uh, thought pattern here. And so in Adam, God created this, this world with the under ruler. Hallelujah. And um, the fact that uh, man existed because God created him. Hallelujah. Where did man come from? Where did life begin? Well, God created it. And, um, you know, science tries to come up with all kinds of stuff. You know, the Big Bang Theory. Cosmic gases were floating around out there and suddenly exploded and threw this whole universe into existence. And, you know, billions and billions and billions of years later, all of a sudden there was some type of spark here on this planet. And out of that spark was a, you know, single cell uh, organism that life was created. And then it began to uh, evolve and it evolved into um, a multi-cell organism that split off. It became other multi-cell organisms that split off and, you know, and all life came out of that one event. You got some faith, baby. Boy, you'd be an awesome Christian. You, you take Mount Ephraim and put it in the sea with that kind of faith. Hello. You know, I mean, yeah. I, I just want to know where, it, where is the evolution process of, 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 um, Life on earth right now, we're in, it's in the middle of this evolutionary process. And we can look at it and go, oh, yeah, that's turning from a, from a uh, monkey to a man. They're halfway there. But it only happens once in each line of, cre of, of genetic creation or, or genetic mutation. You know, only one monkey became a man. Not, it didn't happen anywhere else. Only this one became a fish. Only that became a bird. Only this became a cow. See, science tries to explain stuff. Darwin's theory was so, you know, he even renounced it on his deathbed. Um, what they have proven, well, they created life in a laboratory. Point I'm making. You know, we put it in the laboratory. We, we, we put the electrical current. We put all this stuff there and we got sparks of life. Yeah, intelligence did that. It did not happen randomly. It took intelligence to do that. Hello. Glory to God. Um, when you reject the creator, um, when you reject a creator, I'm sorry, the man who rejects a creator answers that although we cannot prove the spontaneous generation took place, it may have taken place billions of years ago. He, only, he also says that only one germ of living matter would have been necessary. Primeval life germ would have taken for granted, but he must believe that it is inherent within all the possibilities for development of every life in every realm. Man, that's just, that's really, you know, that's beyond scientific. Um, but what, what, what's, the, what's the phrase called? Scientific something when you, you prove something with science. Anybody remember the word it is? It's just a phrase they use. Anyway, so which is harder to believe? Can an honest man believe that all this happened because one living cell spontaneously took place and everything else we see in, in animal life form came from that? Or that an intelligent designer created it? And you call me foolish. Hello. No, the creation of man points to an intelligent creator. The creator of man and Adam points to an intelligent creator of the most tender love and care for man. See, God put all the things here on the earth. Everything about this earth, about this universe was put there for man. To be the ruler over. 
the stars on the heaven, everything, you know, the lesser lights to rule by night and the, brighter, the greater light to rule by the day. And everything in the universe has impact on our planet. Gravitational pulls, etc. Now, I will say, I do kind of believe in a Big Bang Theory. Because Big Bang Theory is that all, all, all the universe exploded from a single point in time, in, um, in, 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 in historical whatever, billions or trillions of years ago. And it exploded, and it's all, ex it started from a single point, and it's expanding in every direction at the speed of light. And that is because God looked into that nothingness, and from a single point said, light be, and he never told light to stop. So it's still expanding at the speed of light in every generation because it's still obeying the word of God. Light, King James says, let there be light. King, uh, the actual Hebrew says, light be light was. <laughs> it's, he said it, boom. It all just from his mouth. He just slung the universe into existence. Hallelujah. Praise God. Man held a special place in this creation. This the last, and it is the crowning glory of this creation. God created everything. He put, you know, the stars in the place and the sun in the place and, you know, the mountains and, you know, uh, I know, I know. The Appalachian Mountains are the oldest mountains in the world, you know, da 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 da, -da, -da. And the Rocky Mountains are the newest mountains in the world, da 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 da, -da, -da. Anyway, God put, it, put the minerals in the ground and put all the things that man would love there and the, fr the flowers and the trees and uh, all, all animal life for man to enjoy. And then he created this man to fellowship with and to rule over his creation. The blight of creation came at the fall of man. When man died spiritually, this entire world went into chaos. Where there once was order, there was disorder. Apparently every creature on the planet was an herbivore. They didn't eat each other. The lion didn't kill the lamb. You could have a pet lion in your house if you wanted to. Uh, why? Because man had authority to subdue everything on the earth. He had authority over everything. All the works of God's hand, man had, had authority over. Hallelujah. And it went into chaos and disorder. Why? The Bible teaches us that Satan came with great wrath. That old dragon came with great wrath. Because he wanted the throne of God and got cast out. I mean, he got booted. He got the left foot of fellowship, as Brother Hagin said. Hallelujah. Uh, the nature of Satan, when it entered into man, um, now an evil, twisted, perverted spiritual atmosphere began to reign the earth. And even in all of that, we can still see the original hand of God in what took place. Hallelujah. Even in all of its twistedness and pervertedness. And, you know, and, and, and really all the insurance uh, companies need to do is change the letter G from a capital to a lower. But when it calls all the things that happen on the earth works of God. Okay. If you're in your insurance policy and make it little God, because the God of this world is behind all of it. He's behind the tornadoes. He's behind the hurricanes. He's behind, you know, the flooding. He's behind the tsunamis and the, and all the, uh, all the upheaval. The, the earth is in an upheaval because creation is out of balance. And that's because of the fall of man. Um, but the father was not inactive during all this time. He, he had set forth a plan. He had set forth a plan to bring um, redemption to mankind. Glory to God. Can you say amen? From the very beginning, he said, the seed of the woman shall bruise your head and you shall bruise its heel. Hallelujah. Glory to God. As we said before, uh, Jerry Savelle said that that meant down in West Texas, uh, he's going to bust your head. Hallelujah. It is the Oriole term that actually meant break your authority. Okay? But he said that down in Texas, we were just, he, he's one coming, going to bust your head, boy. Hallelujah. I think we probably say that in North Carolina. I've, um, I've often thought, all them Texans think they came up with everything. <laughs> I hear their expressions and I go, 
We say that in North Carolina, and we were one of the first colonies. You guys came after us. It was, it's North Carolina that came up with that. Hallelujah. Praise God. So this new creation, what is this new creation? The new creation is a restoration with a fix. See? In the first creation, man could sell us short and sell us out. Not that it wasn't perfect. It was the way God intended it. The second creation or the new creation was made with a man, but made with the man Christ Jesus, and he's not going to sell us out. He had his chance. When Satan tempted him in, those, in the days after 40 days of fasting, and the temptation came, and he said, <clears throat> he took him up to a high place and showed him all the uh, kingdoms of the world and the glory of them and said, all these are mine and the glory of them, and I will deliver it into thine hand if you will but bow down and worship me. People, if you go, theologians go, that wasn't a real temptation, you know. That wasn't a real temptation. He was, no, the real, it was a real temptation. The lie was he would give it to him. That was the lie. Not that he, not that when he, he had the kingdoms and the glory of them. That was not a lie. That was fact. And Jesus knew that. Or else Jesus would have said, you don't have authority. But what Jesus did say is, it's written that thou shalt worship the Lord thy God and only, him only shalt thou worship. Amen. And so Satan uh, tried to get him to bow down and worship him. And the lie was going to be, if he did, he had it. He had the throne of God, which is what he's been after because that's what he went after in the Old Testament. I'll send my throne into the heavens. I'll send this to the throne of the heavens. I'll be as the most high. He's trying to overthrow heaven. And that's what he's been after all along. Hello? And then the Bible tells us, and God said, I'll cast you as profane out of my presence. And um, G Jesus says in Luke, he said, I beheld Satan as light and he fall from heaven. <laughs> he came out at the speed of light. Amen. That's why he used the word lightning, wow. at the speed of light. Right. He was cast out from God's presence at 186,000 miles per second. But probably at warp speed. <laughs> okay? God probably put a little Holy Ghost warp on it. Forget warp nine. Make it so, number one. All right. Hallelujah. Praise God. And so, this new creation, Jesus comes to get back what was lost and establish a, a new creation and a new realm that can't be broken forever. So that Satan no longer could take authority over mankind and hold him into captivity against his will. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You can't be held against your will. So what does Satan have to do? He has to trick you in to giving your will over to him. And he does it many times by telling you God's sovereign. God's got a plan you can't understand. There's some type of plan that you can't realize and you can't figure out. But, you know, uh, that's just God's plan and you're ignorant of it and there's nothing you can do about it. But go along with it and your life of faith is Trusting God, you know, we're going to quote Job, though he slay me, yet will I trust him. Hello. Let's put it like this. People think because Job said that, that it is gospel authority, biblical doctrine. Let me say that. You know, there's a lot of inspired records of some very uninspired events. In the Bible. Now, one bozo was in our church one time, and I just got to call him a bozo because this was bozo. Stood up in the pulpit and said that Bathsheba was God's plan for David. How do we know? Solomon. And I sit on the chair on this end. Yeah, I think we have, still had him at the angle at that point felt the entire congregation go <laughs> I still have you know scar tissue from the burns I'm, I'm joking I'm joking boy they lasered me to see how Pastor Ed was going to react and I got I didn't do any I, and I didn't go amen <laughs> either we had taught our church. They knew better. They just wanted to, they were like, 
Does pastor believe that? <laughs> so I, next, next service I got, I don't believe that. <laughs> Dear Lord. I said, Dear Lord. No, God's not, God's not going around giving, killing off some husband to give that wife to you because that, uh, that was his original plan, plan for you anyway. <sighs> Christians doing drugs. That's about what it's like. You've you got to be on drugs to come up with something like that one. All right. I'm sorry, I just don't believe it. It's not Bible. No. Bathsheba is the story of God's redeeming and reconciling mercies. Not the story of God conspiring to commit murder and then murdering to give a woman to a man. Because he was lusting after her. In his flesh. All right. So, this new creation. See, Adam sells it out, and this kind of whole thing is going to disarray. God's got to put back things back in order. Amen? So much so that now we don't wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers and mights and dominions and the rulers of the darkness of this world. But who are we? We're ambassadors for Christ. They have no authority over us. They have no power over us. They cannot force you to yield. They cannot force you to submit because they don't have the authority. So the only way they get it from you is try to deceive you into believing these teachings that people will come up with that God has some purpose in you having this. God won't give you anything. You know, God won't put anything on you that you can't bear. Now, see, they've taken a partial truth. He would not allow you to, he would not suffer you to be tempted beyond what you're able. Okay? In other words, he sets ground rules that Satan can't come and do anything that you can't beat him at. Hello? Mm -hmm. Meaning that as you grow in revelation, it's not new level, new devil. Right. You know, I, I, do, I, hate that. I hate that phrase. I know a well-known speaker uses it, but I don't find it biblical. Mm -hmm. New level, new devil. They're all out there. Amen. But God's got a restraining order that says, Look, you can't go beyond that. Because they're, they're not, either they're not mature enough, they're not ready spiritually, or they haven't had the opportunity to grow there yet. You, you can't do that. There's, there's a protection level there. We're just you're saying no. Now, not mean that he's letting the devil do stuff to you. It's just saying, okay, no, 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 no. We're going to keep this an even playing field. They, they, they've got the authority. And, they, you know, they, and it, here's the thing. If you're facing something, know this. There's power in you. There's word in you. There's authority in you. There's enough in you to put you over and to cause you to win. No matter what it is you're facing. Now, I'm going to tell you that year, the, uh, 19, uh, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 2016, when we moved out of the business park that fall, that spring, Janie was diagnosed with um, um, a, a uterine cancer. And, you know, she just, she just went ahead and had, had the hysterectomy, got rid of that. And then Christmas of that year, she was diagnosed with breast cancer. And we didn't tell the kids until after Christmas. We waited because we didn't want to, you know, have them think about that. And we told them after Christmas. And um, caught it very, very, very early. Made decisions to go a certain way with that. But we were believing God. It was measured at 5.7 centimeters when they uh, did the biopsy, or, or not biopsy, the pathological report after surgery. It was 1.7. It shrunk to a third of its size. Okay? She's can and, and cancer-free. Did not have to do chemotherapy. Didn't have to do radiation. Didn't have to do hormone therapy. Well, right after, while she's going through all that, um, I step on a nail on my deck and get an ulcerated toe, and they're going to cut my toe off. I mean, we talked about Dr. Hacky Wacky. I mean, he's cut that off. Wants to cut it off. Okay, he comes back a couple weeks later. Well, we still have to cut it off with a knuckle. You can get my toe. You're not putting it in, in liquid in your office in a bowl saying, here's another one of my, my hacky wackies. It's on my foot. And still is. Hallelujah. But we were challenged. 
We were challenged, but we won. Yes. It's just like I told my doctor when he, after four months, he says, well, Mr. Taylor, I'm going to call that hill. I said, doctor, that's what I've been doing for four months. Because I told him, I know how to believe God. You do what you do, and I'll follow your instructions. We'll take the medicine. We'll do all that. But I know how to believe God. God. Yeah. Hallelujah. You know, the, all the medicines, the antibiotics did was get me relief. You know, and give my body an opportunity, amen, to, to, to fight off what was going on. But they all told me I, there's no way I was supposed to keep my tongue. There's just no way. It was, it was, folks, if you saw the pictures, it would turn your stomach. There was a hole about the five sides of this finger all the way down to the bone. I could hear them scraping the bone when they were debrading. <laughs> yeah, a dark hole. It's just, just like, a, like a cave. Yeah. But if I took my shoe off right now, there's a toe there. Now, I do have a scar on the side. I bear in my body the marks. <laughs> Hallelujah. Can you say amen? And so, Satan will try to get you to believe you don't have the authority. Right. And if he can get you to yield to that, that God's got some higher purpose. Mm -hmm. Oh, doesn't that sound spiritual? Mm -hmm. I remember about, in my PH church, there was a lady there, and bless her heart, and, and don't, I'm not making fun, but she had Coke, what we call Coke bottle glasses. And she had all kind of ailments. And she came up and told me that, I mean, she's suffering like Job. She's got Paul's thorn and like the man born blind. I thought, my God, you're all of them. You're all of them. Of course, I'm sitting there with my Strong's Concordance. I'm just saved. So I had a Fiat 124 Sports Spider and the dash. I put a Strong's Concordance and then the Rumley Bible. And I had to bring my Rumley Bible to church one time just to show you how big it was. Big enough to choke a mule. Okay. I mean, it was, it, was, it, was, it was about the size of this, but this thick. And it was the ASV in, in KJV parallel Bible with study notes and charts and maps and all kinds. It's what I took to Rhema and used at Rhema. And, um, but Sister Rumley sold them, and so we call it the Rumley Bible. That's where that name came from. Because she, she sold them to people. When they get saved, she, you got to have this Bible. <laughs> she, and she sell you that Bible. And, uh, and then my, my Amplified Bible. So that took up the entire dash of my Fiat 124 Sports Spider. Because it's only about that wide, you know, two-seat convertible. And uh, I'm sitting there with all my stuff under here, and she's dead. And I'm saying, but Jesus wants you well, you know. Uh, and, you know, you're in a church that believes in the divine healing. Now, we use this term. We, you know, when you join the church, I believe, you know, that Jesus is the Son of God. Da -da -da -da. You know, I believe in the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Wait a second, I'm sorry. I believe in being sanctified. That's the second definite work of grace. Hallelujah. I couldn't leave that out. Hallelujah. I believe in being, I believe the baptism of the Holy Spirit and with the initial evidence of speaking in other tongues. Hallelujah. And uh, I believe in divine healing as in the atonement. We, that, that's when you join the church, you had to, you had to say all that. Okay. And um, so, you're, you know, you're going through all that. And I'm thinking, you're here in this church. You, you're supposed to believe in healing. But there's a reason. She had three reasons she won't go and get healed. And they're all special cases. And God was working out some kind of special thing in her. You know what I found out about most of those people? They never get healed. Well, apparently they never figured out what it was God was trying to work out in them. And that's a shame. Because the whole time, if they knew the truth, and they understood their authority, and they understood who they were in Christ, they could overcome all of that and win. Praise God. Walk away was a winner and not a loser. Amen. Amen. Instead of believing God put it on them to teach them something, they were going after the devil who put it on them. And here's the thing. If you believe God put it on you, it's hard to go to God and ask him to take it off. Amen. Amen. I've told people this in the past. I said, if you believe God put it on you and it's going to teach you something, ask for a double portion. <laughs> Lord, double up on the cancer. Because whatever it is you're trying to teach me, I need that lesson. I need it good. Then you can't get him to do that. And then they run off to the doctor to try to get rid of it. The will of God. Try to get rid of the will of God by going to the doctor. Are you here? Well, if you really believe God put it on you, you better stay away from that doctor. If you believe God's using it to teach you something, stay away from the doctor. Because he's working against the plan of God. 
You're being foolish. No. Let's get this thing straight. They, Satan is evil. Jesus came to redeem you. He came to put a new creation out there that walks in authority, that walks in power, that walks in might, that walks uprightly as the man God intended him to be, and roughshod, runs roughshod right over the devil, singing, look at devil, here I come. I'm going to put you on the run. I'm going to tear your kingdom down. I'm going to run you out of town. Yeah. A little military <laughs> thing there. Y'all remember that, that, you military people? Hello. Okay. And so Paul comes along where man has been born, born under a penalty, where man has been born under Satan's authority. Jesus comes, opens the door to, to redemption, to identification, and now all of a sudden man's free, and Paul begins to write about this freedom. All they knew in the early, early church before Paul started writing was, you know, you're going to get saved. Jesus is going to do something in you. Something supernatural is going to happen. And then Paul began to write about it. And this change began to take place. And, be, and he began to talk about our authority. And he talked talk about <clears throat> being conquerors. Now, in all these things, we're more than conquerors. Not just conquerors, more than conquerors through him that loved us. Yeah. Glory to God. Yeah. This new creation man is more than a conqueror. This new creation man has authority. This new creation man lives in a whole new sphere altogether. Yeah. Glory to God. Yeah. He's not subject to the authority of Satan. Hallelujah. He's so, more, so much out of his authority. He's an ambassador of God. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. What's that mean? That, that term, and we're talking about ambassadorship, gives you diplomatic immunity. Yeah. What flag do you fly? The blood-stained banner of Jehovah Nisi. Glory to God. Hallelujah. There is no forces in hell that have the right to stop and search and seize you. Praise God. You've got the blood covering you. Hallelujah. And your papers say you're born again and filled with the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. And got authority over them. Amen. And if you get in the way, the master. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All you got to do is stand up and, re and release the angels on your behalf. Right. Right. Ministering spirits. Hallelujah. Sent to minister to the heirs of life. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Woo! I said glory to God. Some little imp show up and try to do something. And you say in the name of Jesus and here comes the Calvary. Hallelujah. Little play on words there. Glory to God. Uh, amen. Here it come. Praise God. And when they get here, they go, the Lord doth rebuke thee. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise be to God forevermore. Can you say amen? amen. This, pla this took place even when we were dead in our trespasses and sins. Hallelujah. Ephesians 2, 5. And praise God. This was brought forth legally. <clears throat> Are you here? It says that... Um, where, where we were brought forth into this new creation, spiritually man, dead man, when he was justified, had legal confirmation placed upon him to be conformed to the image of his son. Romans 8, 29, he foreknew, he also foreordained to be conformed to the image of his son. Christ rose from the dead and became, uh, because he had been declared righteous. His soul was not left in hell. Acts 2, 24, when, he, when God raised up, having loosed the pangs of death, 27, because that will not leave my soul in Hades or hell. Acts 2.31, he foreseeing this spake of the resurrection of the Christ. That he was neither left unto Hades, nor did his flesh see corruption. When he was made alive by God, he loosed him from the intense agonies he had suffered in that condition of spiritual death. And there was a new birth of the new creation in Christ. The first creation had been created, the Adam creation, had been created in, in the image of God as the crown and climax of all creation. The new creation was brought forth in hell, confirmed to the image of God's Son, a joint heir with Him. The price that was the Father God paid for this new creation, words can't even come close 
to describing what the new creation means. That's all legal. God's done all that. It's all legal. It's all set aside. Remember, we talked about the other day how that man's name is in the Lamb's Book of Life. It gets blotted out. There's not a new name written. That song is inaccurate. I love it. I mean, we used to sing it all the time. We get all excited about the fact we're saved. There's a new name written down in glory, and it's mine. Oh, yes, it's mine. That wasn't the truth. It's already there. Hallelujah. It just doesn't get blotted out. Oh, thank God. Thank God we've come, hallelujah, to the living God. We've accepted the work of Jesus. Our name won't be blotted out. Hallelujah. Now it's our job to go get others and keep their names in the book. Keep them from getting blotted out. Amen. God has an attitude towards this new creation. Is he any different in his attitude toward the new creation than he was in the, old, or the original creation? Uh -uh. Because the old creation was his intent. For man to live in authority, subdue the earth, live as his co-companion, as the under ruler over all the works of his hands. And Jesus simply came. There'll be a new heaven and a new earth. Why has heaven got to be cleansed? Why does it have to be a new heaven? Because man's authority went up to the mercy seat of God. How do you know? Because that's where the blood had to go. In the temple, the blood had to go to the mercy seat. That's where man's authority went. It didn't go on the throne it didn't go on the seat of God. Why? Because God retained his authority. But it went right up to it. And everything that was touched by man's authority had to be cleansed because Satan had had it. And so there'll be a new heaven and a new earth to cleanse out all. And then we'll reign on the earth with Christ. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. And the old earth and the old earth will have passed away. God's original intention will be fulfilled and, and seen and realized. Can you say amen? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What does God say about this new creation? Hallelujah. Well, Romans 5, 1 says, being therefore declared righteous by faith. Hallelujah. Uh, 1 Corinthians 1, 30, but of him are ye in Christ Jesus, who was made unto us wisdom from God and righteousness and sanctification and redemption. They can't even describe the righteousness of this new man. Man, I'm going to tell you, you've got people who um, can't even say they're righteous. Because they'll go quote Romans 3. There's none righteous, no, not one. Yeah, it also says, you know, ask people when they say that, do you seek after God? With all my heart. No, you don't, because Romans 3 says there are none that seeketh after him. <laughs> Read it. It's what it says. Their mouth is full of poison. Oh, right yeah. No, it's talking about the unregenerated man. Yeah. But see, that unregenerated man, when he becomes born again, is no longer under that, under that penalty. I mean, you, when you look at it, I mean, you go to Romans 3. And you've got to read the whole context of everything. Are you here? And he, he starts out Romans 3 with this. Uh, what advantage then hath the Jew, or what profit is there to circumcision? And he says, much every way, because of them were the committed to the oracles of God. Now, Paul's arguing and dealing with, and he had to deal with this a lot, the idea that, you know, Judaism was still in force and in operation. Galatians. That's what he wrote. That's, that whole letter is dealing with that. Oh, I mean, King James, I think, says, Oh, ye dear, oh, foolish Galatians, who hath bewitched you. J.B. Phillips, my, I love this. I mean, I, if I don't have any other verse out of J.B. Phillips, I like, I like this one. I don't like a lot of it. but I, Oh, ye dear idiots of Galatia. That's how J.B. Phillips translates that. Ye dear idiots of Galatia. Hallelujah. But Paul says, you know, much every way, for some did not believe, their unbelief did not make the faith of God. See, he's arguing a side that the Jews' heritage is important. Okay? And, um, but then he comes down to verse 9 and says, what then? Are we better than they? 
He's talking about Jews being better than the Gentiles. And he says, no, in no wise, for we have been proved both Jew and Gentiles, that they are all under sin. So this next set of phrases is written to support his argument that all men's under sin. As it is written, there is none righteousness. See, you've got to take the context. Paul's laying out a case that the Jew and the Gentile both are in the same boat without Jesus. There's none righteous, no, not one. They've all gone out of the way. They've all together become unprofitable. There's none that doeth good. No, not one. Their throat is an open sepulcher. With their tongues, they've used to see. The poison of asp is under their lips, whose mouth is full of cursing. And yeah, next time they tell you, <coughs> do you uh, that there is none righteous, no, not one, ask them, do you curse? Because he said in that same passage, their mouth is full of cursing. That's what it says. And bitterness. Their feet are swift to shed blood. Destruction and misery are in their ways. And the way of peace have they not known. There is no fear of God before their eyes. Now, not just none righteous, no, not one. It's all the other stuff, too. But they'll quote that in a heartbeat. You say, I'm the righteousness of God. Christ. No, there's none righteous, no, not one. So, hey, let's go, to, let's go to Romans 3 and pick up in verse 9. Now, does all that hit you? Because it says that, because under your interpretation, every bit of this is you. You're cussing, bitter, murdering, blood shedding, hallelujah. I mean, destructive. You're just flat out miserable. Mm -hmm. You don't understand anything. Mm -hmm. You don't even seek after God. But it's all in the same context, mm -hmm. in the same uh, dialogue. Now we know that the things, that what things here the law saith, they saith to them that are under the law. <clears throat> and to them that are under the law, that every mouth may be stopped and all the world may become guilty before God. So this was all said to prove all guilty before God. Why? So that he could bring redemption to all mankind out of his grace and mercy and not by works. Therefore, by the deeds of the law shall no flesh be justified in his sight for the law, before by the law is the knowledge of sin. But now, the righteousness of God without the law is manifested. Being witnessed by the law and the prophets. Even the righteousness of God, which is by faith of Jesus Christ unto all and upon all that believe. For there is no difference. <clears throat> for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. What? This is referring back again, Jew and Gentile. You're not righteous because you had the law. You're not righteous because you washed the right way and did the ceremonial washings. You're not right before God because of this. No. The Jew and the Gentile are in the same boat. But now, the righteousness of God without the law is manifested. And that's what Jesus came to do. That's what he came to do. And I'm not going to finish this tonight. I'm sorry. We'll just keep going with this. We're, just, we're going to have to forget the chapter lines and just keep going. <laughs> Hallelujah. I told you guys, I'm having fun in here. I'm having a blast in this place. I'm going to be honest with you. You know, I'm just like, you know, get some more folk in here because I'm having too much fun just, not, just to keep it just to us. We got to share this. Hallelujah. Now the righteousness of God without laws manifested. Be witness. How? By the law itself and by the prophets. What righteousness? Not the Old Testament righteousness. Not right standing according to the law. Hello? But the righteousness of God, which is how? By faith. By faith of Jesus Christ. And here it is unto all and upon all that believe for there's no difference 
There's none that are righteous. Whoa, 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 whoa. He just got through saying through faith in Jesus Christ and the righteousness that he procured, it's unto me and it's upon me. My righteousness was his filthy rags. The works of the law, doing the works, of, doing the law could not get me righteous. But a work, a supernatural work, a power, a work done through a redemptive plan that God dreamed up, cooked up, came up with, whatever you want to say, but that God in his infinite wisdom formulated and brought to pass with the Son acting in obedience to the will of the Father brought a righteousness, and it is now manifested unto all and upon all who put their faith in Jesus Christ. Not in the sweet by and by. <clears throat> now then, we are called the sons of God. Behold what manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of God. Amen. 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 We used to say back in the restaurant I worked in, right now. <laughs> Glory to God. It's a right now event. I became the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus the moment I opened my mouth and said, Jesus, I declare and confess you as Lord of my life. I was born again from death unto life and the very nature and essence of God himself entered into my human spirit and it was born again <laughs> with the life and the righteousness of God made alive unto him. Hallelujah. As a right now event. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Yes, yes. Hallelujah. This redemption that we have through this identification, this new creation man that God procured through Jesus Christ <coughs> access into his presence. Access to be reconciled to God. We were not reconciled. You know, if, you, if you know anything about Pentecostalism, we had some sayings. That old man's rising up. No. Now, you may not have dealt with your flesh and your flesh, may, but your old man's dead. I said, your old man is dead. You may not have renewed your mind to the word of God, but the old man's dead. Likewise, reckon ye also yourselves to, to be dead unto sin, but alive unto God. Amen. How, how, how can he who is dead live any sin any longer? Like one guy said one time, you can go over to the graveyard and you can go get the entire Hooters wait staff and run them through the graveyard butt naked and there ain't going to be one man to turn up and jump up out of his grave. Because they're dead. It's not going to have an effect on them. So that's kind of, a, well, come on, guys. I mean, let's be real. You got the picture, didn't you? Well, maybe not the picture, but you got the essence of what I was saying. Don't, don't get the picture. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. So God's attitude to this creation is, that it's to be restored to what it was supposed to be in the first place. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> to walk in authority. Yeah. So what Jesus did is he came, he took the authority of man back from Satan mm -hmm. yeah. and turned right around and gave it back to man. All authority in heaven and in earth is given unto me. Therefore you go. And in my name, now he, he, he put a stipulation on it. Why? Wow. This authority belongs to him, and now he's put it on retainer or loan to us that as long as we walk in accordance with him and use his name, it's there. Yeah. Yeah. That way it can't be broken. And in my name, you cast out devils. Literally, the Greek would say, exercise authority over demons. 
We love, we love casting out, though. We, come on! Do a little sandbox, you know. I said, come on! In Jesus' name. Sandbox. Everybody says, yeah. how do y'all know what the Hebrew word Shabbat means? Sandbox! <laughs> it's the shout to the Lord. <laughs> it works. I mean, you know. And now y'all never forget that, will you? Shabbat means shout, because Shambach. <laughs> Oh, uh, love Brother Shambach. Yeah. He was there with A.A. A. Allen and saw the, the miracle of the baby. That's been floating around on Facebook some about the A.A. Uh, Allen meeting with that baby with the no eyes and, and all these deformities. And they said and the bones cracked and the eyes swirled and all that. And Shambach was standing there holding his coat watching it happen. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You think you, you ain't seen nothing yet. There's miracles coming. Because see, there's, there's, a, there's, a, there's a resurrection taking place in the church yeah. of people who know their rights. Yeah. Hallelujah. Who are, no longer, who are no longer satisfied with the, you know, well, we got to use this technique and we got to use that method and we got to have this kind of light show. We got to have this kind of fog machine who are hungry for the things of God, who are hungry to walk in their authority and to walk in their power and to walk as a born again believer who's walks and does the works of Jesus even greater works than him because they come to a realization that they're a new man in Christ. They're a new creature in Christ. And the very creation that the Father intended for getting, in the beginning for man, he now intends for the new creation to walk in and to walk in the authority of, hallelujah, and to go to the earth and subdue it and overcome it and take it for the kingdom of God, glory to God, I mean, and do the works that we're supposed to be doing, casting out devils, raising the dead, <clears throat> healing the sick, praise God, miracles, signs, and wonders in these last days, glory to God, with the outpouring of God. Seymour prophesied of another Azusa Street about 100 years after that one. Azusa Street ended about 1917, wherever there's somewhere in that time frame. Uh, it began to dwindle, uh, dwindle and dwindle. But uh, he said in about another 100 years, there'll be another Azusa Street outpouring. It's coming on the earth. And part of it's going to be the 88 vision, praise God. There's, I mean, there's a, there's a coming, there's coming on the earth. But how's it going to happen? There's going to be believers who rise up and take their position. There are going to be believers who rise up and say, I'm the child of God. I'm a new creation being. Satan has no authority over me. I walk in authority over all the power of the enemy. Glory to God. And nothing shall by any means hurt me. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. And I speak and it comes to pass. Hallelujah. Because I walk and talk as the oracles of God. Because I live in the anointing of God with the Holy Ghost on my life, flowing out of my life, where down it's no longer just a spring springing up unto everlasting life, but rivers of living water flowing out yes. to the nations Amen. in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. I said, Hallelujah. hallelujah. <clears throat> this new creation man is you. This new creation man is you. Yes. You are that new creation man called of God to walk in absolute authority over all the works of the enemy. For this purpose <clears throat> was the Son of God manifest to bring to naught the works of the devil. I can't, I love the French Bible translated back into English. For this purpose was the Son of God manifest to reduce to zero the works of the devil. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. I said, Hallelujah. We are that new creation. We are that church. We are those people. And we're not trying to be cute. And we're not trying, listen, folks, it's cute's over. I said, cute's over. Doing these cute little things and having little fog machines and little flashing lights and everybody coming in in their skinny jeans and their bed head, you know, and all this stuff and trying to be, you know, hip and cool and hipster and all this stuff, you know, and, and, and try to get the people because we, we, we relate to them and how we act like them. We need them to relate with us and how we act like Jesus. Yeah. Right. Follow me as I follow the Lord. Right. Amen. They were first called Christians at Antioch. Why are they called Christians? Because they acted so much like Jesus, they said, you're little Christ. Yep. Word Christian means little Christ or Christ-like. Literally, little Christ. We're miniatures. We're replicas. We're going forth. I said, we're going forth. 
People are already seeing this building. I was at Subway the other day. I, was, I had to come down here and meet the, um, meet, some, meet some contractor. I forgot. Oh, the one measuring for the door. And um, I, I said something about the, the church down there. She said, oh, the green one? I said, yeah. She said, me and my boyfriend ride our bikes by there. I said, yeah. I said, you know, well, come see us. <laughs> yeah. They already know. There's, 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 there's somebody new here. Uh -huh. And they know it. People are seeing it. <laughs> Hallelujah. They're going to see a lot more. They're going to ride by and there's going to be glory just drawing them. Yeah. Come on in here. Yeah. Hallelujah. There's, go, there's going to be manifestations. Of, get in there. Hallelujah. They'll come walking in like eyeballs bugged out going, I don't know why I'm here, but I, I feel like I was supposed to be here. Yeah, we know why. Yeah. Be like that man one time. He was walking down the street and this light came down in front of him. It was back in the 50s. And he started following that light. And he went down the road here and turned down this alley. He went down there and turned down another way. He went down here. And then it went in a door. And he followed him in there. And he walked in there. And that light was down at the altar. He just walked right down there and got saved. <laughs> he said, I don't know what happened. He said, but I saw that light. And I followed it in here. And I don't even know why I'm here. They said, we do. And then preached Jesus to him and got born again. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. God's awesome. Yes, he is. See, there's, there's supernatural things coming. Yeah. The American church has gotten gotten lazy and gotten what we want to use techniques and we want to use the right uh, 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 um, terminology and we want to use the right, you know, lighting and all this. I don't, listen, I don't care if we got good lighting. We, we're going to put some lights up. But I'm, the disco ball is not going in here. <laughs> because if it comes on, I'm probably going to stop dancing and the Holy Ghost will start going. <laughs> oh, that's, that's when I was younger, before I got saved. <laughs> you know? But I'll be doing Travolta. I'm old enough to have done Travolta on the lighted <laughs> dance floors. Are you dead? Did, was, you did this, yeah. yeah. I mean the squares with the different lights under them. You know, in the disco ball and the same beat for every song. You know? Huh? Okay, okay, Newport, Newport Beach, California, where the Beach Boys were. They, they went to school. <laughs> but glory. But it's going to be as we walk in our authority and walk as who we are in Christ, identified with him. Yeah. Folks, you can You can put an image out there and draw people for a short time. You can, put a, you can put a commercial on out there. Cheesecake about this big wedge, about that tall. Got cherries just all over and the juice, you know, that, that, that uh, sugar syrup that they canned them in running all down the sides. And the people eating it, and I mean, just absolutely, their mouth is like, oh. But when you go in there and it's like this big, and it's about that tall. And there's a, a half a cherry with a little bit of that syrup up there. You didn't deliver. And the church is so busy try, many times trying to use imagery to draw people in and then not delivering when they get there. And we have to deliver. But we can't deliver for the sake of delivering. We have to deliver because we're walking in the spirit and we're walking with who we are and we're walking in God and he just comes out of us. Yes. 